Well, before we get to your book, I want to talk about some health-related stories. Okay. We're Give in the me. middle of flu season. Right. Mm -hmm. And 27 children in the United States have died of the flu, which is unbelievable in this yeah. day and age. Yeah. Uh, what do we need to know about that? You know, I think the flu has a PR problem in the country, and it's partially, partially, the media's fault because sometimes the media overhypes things and then it becomes like the boy who cried wolf. And when things get serious, people are like, ah, we've heard that. Oh. The flu kills people oh. every year. Okay. We know that that is a fact, that is not hype. We won't know how this flu season is till it's behind us, mm -hmm. but it is looking pretty bad. The numbers come out this afternoon for this week from the CDC. We'll be reporting on it at ABC. We expect them to go up and it is not too late to get a flu shot. But is there a va anti-vaxxer uh, movement behind this? No, that's not that's not the issue. No. It's that I, I see people all the time, whether it's viewers or patients, who say, uh, I'll take my chances, it's never happened to me. I have a saying in medicine, it only needs to happen once. Mm -hmm. And that happened to me. But, there you and go. I, I, because every time I got the shot, I would get a little sick, so I'm me like, it's too. not worth it. Yeah. And so then I didn't do it one year, and I got the all-out flu for two weeks. Yeah. I will, I do want to ask, though, can the shot not always be right for whatever flu we Absolutely, get this year? Absolutely, that's correct, Abby, but this year it does look okay. well matched. And just to clear up any myth, you cannot get the flu from the vaccine. It doesn't contain live virus, so it's not even scientifically possible. Let me ask you something, because I've, I've, I've had something for like 10 days. Oh, I think yeah, it's now gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I have been overdosing on NyQuil, you know, serving it on okay. the rocks with a twist of lime. I know, right? <laughs> no, I'm How do you know when you have a cold and when you have a flu and when you have what? Listen, I think no that analogy. it can be hard, and it's but. not up to you or the patient or layperson to make that assessment. You want to see a medical or the professional. Doctor, Anna. Exactly. Well, you live with your wife. But in general, and we have to remember there are other viruses that are circulating right now that can make us sick. But in general, you know, the flu comes with high fever, symptoms below you know. the neck and above the neck. And some people can have mild flu, but most of the time, and I've had it twice, it knocks you down mm -hmm. for the count for about seven days. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right? I, I have a question. The T.I. thing. Mm. I remember that story where he went um, to his daughter's uh, OBGYN appointment mm -hmm. uh, because he wanted to make sure that she was a virgin. Um, now, you're, you're a gynecologist. Um, yeah. What is, just, what is your take on that? Many people thought it was a violation of his daughter's privacy. I mean, do we have an hour? Listen, <laughs> I, I, first of all, to be clear, there is no gynecologic exam that tells whether a girl or woman is a virgin. Okay, right. number one. Number two, I can't believe we're actually having this discussion in 2020. Yeah. Um, but we do need some perspective and context that women and girls, both in this country and other countries in the world, are beaten and murdered if they are examined and mm -hmm. thought to be non-virginal. Mm -hmm. So this is not just a pop culture fluff story. Yeah. There is real women's health significance to this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, as a board certified gynecologist, mm -hmm. one of the other important things are that it unfortunately makes gynecologists sex doctors, mm -hmm. usually there's a person attached to the vagina. Mm -hmm. And we take care of the whole woman head to toe. We are women's health experts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but to wrap up, Sonny, I do also give every parent the benefit of the doubt that what he or she is doing for their child, while it might be misguided and misinformed, is what he or she thinks is best for their child. I, I try to give people mm. the benefit of the doubt. But what if a dad does want to be involved? Like, like, let's say you have a single father yeah. and needs to take his daughter to the gynecologist. Why doesn't he just ask her? I mean, yeah. I think that it has to be age dependent, number one. If you're talking about a minor, there is emancipated reproductive health laws in this mm -hmm. country, as you know, that vary state to state. I think that dads, it can, it's understandable that they feel a little uncomfortable with this topic, but education, communication is key. And the more a dad is involved with their daughter's health, the better it yeah. will be. Well, we for love her. having you here because you have such good life advice, but you're also here for something pretty yeah, special <laughs> The Self Care Solution, a new book that you have written. And it, I mean, the book is great, but something that I loved is you challenged yourself for a year to do yeah. something different every month. Yeah. Why did you do that, and what did you learn through that process? Well, you guys know, because we're all ABC family here, that I was coming out of the worst year of my life, mm -hmm. 2017. And like many people who are dealing with their down points in life, 
I felt like I had spent a lot of time that year focusing on other people. I wanted to turn the lens as a, as a doctor and a mom that I turned to other people on myself. And I wanted to do these monthly wellness challenges. That's why this is not, Joy, about like a massive resolution. Uh -huh. And I started with one thing and it led to another and another. Um, I wanted to make them fun. What was I was the hardest to... one you did. Oh God! You Probably hydration. January with the dry I started January. dry month. <laughs> I called it dry January when I told my brother, who's a doctor, I was doing a dry month. He goes, "Really? I'm doing a wet month." Um, <laughs> but you know, they were. I learned something this from is an all election of them. Year. It's going to be very hot. <laughs> very to do a dry exactly. Month. Very wet. Very exactly. wet year. Um, but it was really amazing, and and I I went through it myself. I share that in the book, and then I present some of the science. But the idea was that it could be for anyone mm -hmm. to do anytime, anywhere, cheap, easy. Fun, joy, so you fun. Said you, you divided the challenges into <laughs> into three categories, right? She does a lot of exercise. I know she does. That's why she's spinning. Is, no, but well, she so she divided these categories yeah. into three the challenges into three categories, which oh. I did too. What's here? Nice. Lose weight, eat something green that's not an M and M, and vote, vote, vote. <laughs> See, I like that. Alaska's so, I mean, so what are your so, divisions? So right, and like everyone can find their own categories. I picked something that we eat or drink or yeah. don't eat or drink, how we move, not a workout, and then above the neck, stress, sleep, meditation, mindful tech, mm. and you know, kind of walk people through them so all. So when you but say how we move, are we really talking choosing between a, between a, a, no, like a Corvette easy, or a, like I mean, stretching? <laughs> like I have really bad posture, and I felt like I had oh, be better uh, posture. Just made me want to sit up. Right, everybody straighten up. Walk. We're looking. Walk. Just yeah. walk more. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Walk more. Congratulations. Thank you. Just guys. walk. Walk, to, walk to the bedroom. Walk to the living room. <laughs> walk back to the, walk to the walk kitchen. Back. Thanks, Joy. Walk Give to the snack. refrigerator. Uh, thanks to Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Her new best-selling book, The Self-Care Solution, is out now.